I moved out of Teesside in 2009 when I was signed to a modeling agency. I was a very small fish in a very big pond, but I was in an uh, industry, the fashion industry, which I loved so much. When I started modeling, it was around the time that e-commerce was becoming a thing. Social media, Instagram wasn't even around at this point. Really, this was the first time that I'd witnessed that technology had transformed the way that we sell and consume fashion. But I'm not going to lie to you. When I was modeling, I was working for a lot of those fast fashion brands that sold online. And whilst I was felt really lucky to be working in this industry, there was something that was niggling at the back of my mind. The more that I was observing, the more that I was working, the more that I noticed the excessiveness of fast fashion. And as a model whose job is to sell clothes, I really felt like I was contributing to the overproduction and overconsumption of fashion, which we know is detrimental to people and planet. And on a personal note, as I was getting older as a model, I felt as disposable as the clothes I was expected to sell. But on the other hand, I had just first-hand witnessed the transformative results of technology and the opportunities it could bring. Just as we'd seen e-commerce rise through technology, I thought, surely we can use technology to drive more sustainable consumer behavior. I believe that we can use tech as a tool to drive positive change in the fashion industry. And I explore this through my work. So my PhD research that looks at the impact of digital, digital transformation on fashion, through the business that I've co-founded with fellow Northerner, um, which looks at using technology to transform retail to, from linear to circular commerce, and also my work with the modeling industry to help and better prepare them in the face of these new emerging technologies such as artificial intelligence. And all of these things that I do have one common theme, and that is to use technology to drive and support a sustainable fashion future. Now this thing, this place, this reality called the metaverse, this is not just going to change the way that we consume, but the way that we live our lives. What the metaverse is is actually still quite unclear, but what we do know is it a parallel reality that will blend our physical and digital lives. Imagine just not dressing for the day, but also thinking about dressing our digital identity too. And I know what you're all thinking. You're thinking, oh my gosh, we haven't even figured out how to be sustainable in our own phys physical lives, and here I am talking to you about a digital one. And I might be getting a bit ahead here, but what I do know and what I do believe is that we can use foresight instead of hindsight to better plan, to better prepare, and to better adopt fashion with sustainability front and center when we create these new digital worlds. What the metaverse is and can be is not written in the stars. It is written in code. And that means we have control over what we create. And there is where the opportunity lies. And generations are spending more and more time online. This innovation is already underway. Don't be surprised if your children and your grandchildren come to you saying they're off to make the mates in the metaverse. It's going to happen. If we focus on sustainability, the 17 Sustainable Development Goals that were created in the UN in 2015 are used as a blueprint for people and planet to tackle some of these global challenges that we face on an environmental, economic and social level. I believe that a lot of these goals are still relevant when we're talking about digital worlds, but the ones that are highlighted here are closest to my research and also closest to my heart, and the ones that I will be talking to you about today. And I also want to talk to you about this term called responsible innovation. It means taking care of the future through collaboration of science and technology. If we look at the med medical industry, we would never release a new innovation, new medicine on people if we didn't understand the impact it would have on humans. And I believe that we should lo look at technology in the same way within any context, even in the fashion context. The metaverse, in many respects, is seen as an ethical challenge. So what is the purpose of fashion in the metaverse? How do you want to dress? How do you want to be represented and seen within these new spaces? Because the possibilities in the metaverse are limitless. 
You could be a dragon and defy gravity. You could be as lean as a ballet dancer and as buff as a rugby player. You can wear all the design of fashion from Balenciaga and Gucci at a fraction of the cost of the physical item. And here I am at Metaverse Fashion Week earlier this year. And yeah, I went for a more casual look. I think it still looks a bit like me. But a lot of people were coming. They bought outfits to specifically come to this online event. And they were very eccentric and very out there. I think people were flying around me at one point. From an environmental standpoint, many digital fashion advocates believe that actually dressing with digital fashion is the most sustainable option because actually it doesn't exist. If you're going to buy an outfit and wear it once on social media, then why not wear a digital garment instead? But everything comes with a carbon footprint. Energy is required to create these spaces, to create these digital items, and also create these slides that I'm showing to you now. From an economic standpoint, the metaverse is a space for fashion to sell and market, but I do wonder if this is the most responsible way for people to use these digital spaces. If we are to reduce our co consumption, will digital fashion replace our need for physical items, or will it just offer us more ways to consume? From a social standpoint, many people see the metaverse as a specified community, and digital fashion as a way to express themselves that they may feel restricted by in their physical bodies. To create an avatar that, of themselves that really expresses their inner them. This avatar here was created by the Institute of Digital Fashion. It is the first ever non-binary avatar of their co-founder, Cathy Tay. And this avatar sits alongside a study they did in 2021 that says that people want more diverse representation in online spaces. What is different about the metaverse to our physical lives is that we have these extra decisions to make. It's not just about how we dress, but what body we want to encompass as well. In one of my favourite books, The Age of Earthquakes, it says that every technology allows us to learn something new about ourselves. In the metaverse, if we want to, if we wish, we can change our gender, our body shape, the colour of our skin, the length of our hair. We could even be a different species. We can redefine beauty in unexpected ways. This is my avatar here that was created in collaboration with creative technologist Callum Toy. And he brought to life how I wanted to be represented in this physical space. The conversations that we had around this was quite philosophical, sometimes therapeutic. But this journey to find my digital self was really a journey of connection. I felt quite connected to this digital version of myself. And it allowed me to have control of, over how I wanted to be seen. I actually showed this to my mum earlier, and she noticed all the Bjork and David Bowie references that I love, and I felt come out in this, so I was really happy about that. <laughs> what is becoming really important in my research, what's becoming really apparent in my research, is that autonomy over our digital selves is of utmost importance. This is not just about what we create, but why we're creating it and how we're creating it, and where it will be used. Who owns these digital versions of our ourselves? So I want to come back full circle to my modeling days. Because models have already been asked to create digital versions of themselves to be used in e-commerce and the metaverse. This is another version of myself that was created through volumetric scanning. As you can see, it's much more photographic. What is interesting about this is that models don't necessarily own these versions of themselves or the data that comes with it. In the same way that a model doesn't own the image that they're in because the photographer does, the technology company, or to be quite frank, whomever foots the bill, will own this digital version. If any of you have watched the movie The Congress, you'll know what I mean. If you don't, I suggest you do. Very fitting. There is an opportunity here. Models no longer need to travel, which reduces their carbon footprint. They don't need to travel for shoots across the world. They can be at multiple places at multiple times, working for multiple clients, making money whilst they're at home or on holiday with their family. 
And this digital version of themselves never tires. However, there is opportunity here, if placed in the wrong hands, for misrepresentation, misuse, and overuse. I've been working with the modeling industry to help agencies better prepare and better, prote better protect models' rights when it comes to using these digital versions to ensure that clients and brands are using them responsibly, ethically, and respectfully with the human represented in mind. So, if we are to walk into the metaverse as our fabulous, fashionable digital versions, how do we retain this perspective and control with those sustainable development goals I spoke about earlier in mind? This is my idea of best practice, a manifesto for fashion in the metaverse, if you will. It is still work in progress as my research adapts and grows, but I do hope it sets the tone of what the metaverse could be, a space for exploration, for creation, for expression, but does not compromise on ethics, the importance of autonomy, and also allows us to rethink the way, um, the, the way that we consume and why we consume fashion. So finally, I ask you, what do you see the role of fashion in the metaverse? Thank you.